I'm Philip Bortmans, radiation oncologist, and after my initial training in Belgium quite some years ago, and a lot of years in the Netherlands, a couple of years in France, I'm back in Belgium. I work at the Iridium Network nearby Antwerp. I had the pleasure and the honor to give two presentations at the recent BGICC, which unfortunately, for the well-known reasons, need to be held virtually. The first presentation was on postmastectomy radiation therapy in patients who had immediate breast reconstruction. First of all, I want to have a clear statement. If possible, breast conserving therapy should be preferred over a mastectomy. We know from the Dutch results and many other data that there is a trend that outcomes are better after breast conserving therapy. Secondly, those patients who need a mastectomy for whatever reason will be offered breast reconstruction. And nowadays, more and more, this is done together with the mastectomy, so in immediate breast reconstruction. Quite some of those patients require post-mastectomy radiation therapy, which will, for the proper indications, improve cure rates and overall survival. And this poses a challenge to the radiation oncologist because in the past mastectomy, you had a chest wall, often quite thin, the regional lymph nodes, we were used to perform treatment planning. Now we have a reconstructed breast, which in quite some cases doesn't have the optimal anatomical shape, posing already some uh, ballistic uh, challenges, but also constitutes of foreign material in case of an implant or autologous tissue reconstruction, which brings with it non-target volume breast tissue. The main target volume for post-mastectomy radiation therapy to the chest wall are the draining lymphatics. And because in most occasions, the indication for post-mastectomy radiation therapy consists of lymph node involvement, the draining lymphatics are those in the subcutaneous lymphatic plexus. In patients who have high-risk tumors, deeply seated or on a place close to the thoracic wall, the lymphatic drainage might also go via the posterior plexus and from there easier reach the internal memory lymph nodes. So to explicitly target the draining lymphatics subcutaneously just underneath the skin and in some of the patients deeply seated just above the thoracic wall, we need to start from the principle of individualized target volume contouring. And this is not like we used to do it up until quite some years ago, just putting two tangential fields and including the entire chest wall and breast, including the rec reconstructed material, but it is only the lymphatic tissue. The implant or autologous mat material, which comes from outside, which per definition is not at risk for having recurrences, should ideally not be included. For all of this, we started a PhD program, a PhD program consisting on reviewing the site of local recurrences after mastectomy, after mastectomy with immediate breast reconstruction, implant-based or autologous, and also to look after specific circumstances, like for example, where are the sites of residual breast tissue in the case of skin sparing or nipple sparing mastectomies. Up to now, four of those manuscripts have been published in the literature. The first author is Dr. Kaidar Persson, my PhD student, and a lot of other work is ongoing. So where are we now? We are now that we just published a uh, treatment planning study using the target volume contouring guidelines and proper treatment techniques to properly irradiate only the draining lymphatics and not in this case, in this study, the implant. The next step is that we will do a similar exercise with autologous material. 
This data show that in quite some cases, it is possible to lower the dose to the implant, to the reconstructed material, and thereby to lessen the risk for late complications. Whether or, or uh, not this basic idea, basic principle will work, needs to be validated. And for the validation, I make some promotion for the Danish breast cancer group radiation therapy recon trial. In this patients, in this study, patients will be invited to be randomized between the standard arm, which is mastectomy followed by radiation therapy, and after six to 12 months, a breast reconstruction, or mastectomy with immediate breast reconstruction using a tissue expander, followed by post-mastectomy radiation therapy, and uh, finalizing the reconstruction by uh, replacing the tissue expander by an implant six to 12 months later. Outcomes of those studies are, of course, local control, but much more important is the rate of complication and the uh, cosmetic outcome. Randomization of this type is quite a challenge. That's why for other countries than Denmark, the study also opens a prospective court study in which patients who had a um, mastectomy with immediate breast reconstruction can be registered and followed identical to the patients in the RT recon trial. And I highly propagate to participate to this because if we are lacking anything in breast reconstruction, it is evidence on large groups of patients and with uh, sufficient follow-up. With that, I would like to close saying that it is a big opportunity, one of the biggest opportunities to join forces with a surgeon. Go together with your surgeon to assist in a couple of those uh, reconstructions to see how a mastectomy is done and to better realize as radiation oncologists how proper target volume identification and contouring should be done. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.